Hello and welcome to our online worship for the 16th Sunday after Trinity. My name's Jo Neary and I'm the team vicar in the Bemminster team and it's really good to welcome you as we worship together. I wonder what your week has been like. Um, autumn seems to have arrived with a vengeance. I seem to remember as a child that there was always this tussle about going back to school as to whether you went back in your summer dress or in your winter uniform. And um, I don't imagine there's been much tussling uh, this return to school. I think we're all back into uh, raincoats and proper shoes straight away. No sandals left at all. Um, but I hope that you have had a positive week, whatever you've been doing. We've had more baptisms this week. Uh, I've been visiting care homes. I'm back in school for school collective worship. It's been a delight to see three of our primary schools this week. Toddler group was back. Um, I can't tell you the joy I get from toddler group singing. It's just the best. Funeral visits, all the usual stuff of parish ministry, uh, some administration, the team news deadline is rapidly approaching. I have no idea where the time goes. It kind of rattles on uh, and we're heading into harvest festival time and we're in this season of creation tide. So I hope September is treating you well as we're pretty much almost halfway through it. Um, our worship today continues with our creation tide theme. And so let's prepare to worship God. God in Christ has revealed his glory. Come, let us worship. From the rising of the sun to its setting, the Lord's name is greatly to be praised. Give him praise, you servants of the Lord. O oh, praise the name of the Lord. We sing our song. Mm.
our opening prayer. We praise you, loving God, that you give strength to the earth that sustains us. You open your hand to feed all living things. We praise you, Lord Jesus Christ. You teach us with the stories of seeds and weeds and harvest time. You call us to accept your word and bear much fruit. We praise you, Holy Spirit, fire of love. You are the breath of life in every creature. You refresh our thirsty souls with grace. Blessed be God, source of wisdom, living word, abiding spirit. Blessed be God forever. In this time of worship, we have an opportunity to bring before God the things that we have done wrong this week uh, and to say sorry for our sins. We confess our sins and the sins of our society in the misuse of God's creation. We keep a moment of silence as we bring our sins before God. God, our Father, we are sorry for the times when we have used your gifts carelessly and acted ungratefully. Hear our prayer and in your mercy, forgive us and help us. We enjoy the fruits of the harvest, but sometimes forget that you have given them to us. Father, in your mercy, forgive us and help us. We belong to a people who are full and satisfied, but ignore the cry of the hungry. Father, in your mercy, forgive us and help us. We are thoughtless and do not care enough for the world that you have made. Father, in your mercy, forgive us and help us. We store up goods for ourselves alone as if there were no God and no heaven. Father, in your mercy, forgive us and help us. The Lord enrich you with his grace and nourish you with his blessing. The Lord defend you in trouble and keep you from all evil. The Lord accept your prayers and absolve you from your offences. For the sake of Jesus Christ, our Saviour. Amen. We pray the collect prayer for this 16th Sunday after Trinity. Let us pray. Lord of creation, whose glory is around and within us, open our eyes to your wonders, that we may serve you with reverence and know your peace at our life's end. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Our reading today comes from Mark's Gospel, chapter 8, verses 27 to the end. Jesus went on with his disciples to the villages of Caesarea Philippi, and on the way he asked of his disciples, Who do people say that I am? And they answered him, John the Baptist, and others, Elijah, and still others, one of the prophets. He asked them, but who do you say that I am? Peter answered him, you are the Messiah. And he sternly ordered them not to tell anyone about him. Then he began to teach them that the Son of Man must undergo great suffering and be rejected by the elders, the chief priests and the scribes, and be killed, and after three days rise again. He said all of this quite openly, and Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him. But turning and looking at his disciples, he rebuked Peter and said, Get behind me, Satan, for you are setting your mind not on divine things, but on human things. He called the crowd with his disciples and said to them, If any want to become my followers, let them deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. For those who want to save their life will lose it, and those who lose their life for my sake and for the sake of the gospel will save it. For what will it profit them to gain the whole world and forfeit their life? Indeed, what can they give in return for their life? Those who are ashamed of me and of my words in this adulterous and sinful generation, of them the Son of Man will also be ashamed when he comes in his glory, in the glory of his Father, with the holy, holy angels. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our Gospel reading today uh, is based around questions. 
questions that Jesus ask, asks of his disciples and the things that they say. And then the weird bit says that he tells them not to tell anyone else. It happens in other places in the gospel where people who've been healed are told not to tell about what's happened to them. And we've just, it's kind of hard to imagine that anyone could not tell or share the good news of what's happened when something life-changing has happened to them. And we heard in our gospel reading last week, uh, the Syrophoenician woman who asked for healing for her daughter and the deaf man who was healed. Jesus said, don't tell anyone, but of course they did. And in fact, the more he told them not to tell anyone, the more they did tell other people. Jesus asked the disciples, who are people saying I am? He's kind of gauging the temperature. Have people got who I am and what I'm about? And the, the answers are revealing. They suggest that they think he might be holy. There's definitely a recognition of holiness, but they can't quite place it. Is he, a, is he a prophet? Is he John the Baptist come back from the dead? Is he Elijah come back from the dead? Uh, the test, Old Testament teaching was that Elijah would return uh, to um, usher in the Messiah. So there's a sense in which people have got half the story, but not quite the full picture. They recognise something um, holy, something godly, something awe-inspiring in who Jesus is, but they can't quite work out who he is except for Peter. And Peter says, you are the Messiah, the one we've been waiting for. And he sternly orders them not to say anything. And you think, why? Why? Is, is Jesus not ready for that fame? Is it not yet part of the plan of the revelation? Is there more to come? Is it just that he's building this understanding? Is it that he's now about to, to open out his ministry to the Gentiles from just coming from the children of Israel? It's really questioning. Why does he not want people to say? And Peter is just so foolish, isn't he? Because Jesus then says to him, you know, yes, I am the Messiah and this is what's going to happen. And Peter, you can understand, you know, Peter's just said, you're the one we've been waiting for. And then Jesus says to him, and this is how it's going to happen. And it's not going to be triumphant and armies and horses and throwing out the Romans and reclaiming Jerusalem. It's not going to look like that. It's about justice and mercy and forgiveness and shame and humility and me being put to death at the hands of the oppressing forces. And poor old Peter just can't get it. How can he confess with his lips that Jesus is the Messiah, the Lord, the one they've been waiting for, and then the plan is set out for him and he's like, what? It can't be. And Jesus expands it into taking up our cross is not actually about victory. Taking up our cross is about suffering and working and being prepared to be changed and it not being about us at all, but it be a, about the people that we do this for. Jesus is not lifted high on a cross to celebrate Jesus. Jesus is lifted high on a cross as an offering of love, of compassion, of a means of suffering alongside others. The cross really isn't a victory. The cross is a play, place of shame and torture and unimaginable horror. I find it difficult to celebrate that. But what Jesus does is says, you are worthy of my love for you and the plan looks different to the one you thought it would be this is not about saying that Jesus is Lord and you are all subject to his rule I think this is about saying Jesus is Lord and he loves you and wants to live a life with you a life of compassion and mercy and love and tell you that you are loved and you are worthy and our job as Christians is to love a world into changing and to change a world through loving, compassionate service and worship and kindness and equality and justice and mercy. To reject the power that puts people publicly to death on a cross and instead to embrace the power of loving and holiness and service and love and forgiveness and it's too big for Peter to comprehend and it's too big for others to comprehend.
Why doesn't he want them to talk about it? I don't really know is the honest answer. But something about when we know the love of Christ and we understand the love of Christ, then perhaps we will have the confidence to tell his story to the world. We're not told to keep quiet anymore. We're encouraged to tell the story of one who loves us so much he would suffer alongside us, even to death, to transform a world from power and hatred and violence into a world of love, mercy and forgiveness. That, my brothers and sisters, is a story worth telling. So we declare our faith in God. We believe in God the Father from whom every family in heaven and on earth is named. We believe in God the Son who lives in our hearts through faith and fills us with his love. We believe in God the Holy Spirit who strengthens us with power from on high. We believe in one God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Amen. Helen is going to lead us in our prayers. Let us pray. Father God, give us grace as you gave the first disciples to recognise you for who you really are. May our hearts expand to seek to become like your heart, open and compassionate. May our minds be stretched to comprehend your truth and wisdom. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Jesus, our teacher, we thank you for your earthly ministry and the example which you gave through your willingness to endure suffering. As you put the needs of others before your own comfort, so we pray, enable us to think and act in ways which overcome our own selfishness. Open our eyes to see ways in which we may serve you in the needs of others. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Creator God, thank you for the wonders of your creation and help us care for our environment and promote climate justice for all. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Jesus, our King, rules us with mercy, truth and love. Today we are mindful of the lack of peace across the Middle East, Ukraine and Sudan, the deep pain which is caused by the continual fighting. We pray for those who suffer as a result of human greed and the hatred and intolerance of others. So we pray for all of those engaged in the work of peace. Be with those who negotiate for peace. We especially pray for the EAPPI, supporting ordinary people to live in the occupied West Bank. We ask that you would change hearts, that we might learn to live in peace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Jesus, our prophet, we pray for the Salisbury Diocese, our bishops Stephen, Karen and Andrew. We seek your blessing upon the work of your churches here in the Bemister team. And help us support our clergy, David, Joe and partner priests. We pray for all our new baptism families around the team this month. Give them a desire to build a relationship with you and help us all to see your kingdom grow. As we start the school term, be with the children and the teachers as they navigate new classes and experiences. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Jesus, our healer, we pray for those who are troubled in body, mind or spirit. 
We remember those who are called upon to care for them in different ways, for professional doctors, nurses and carers, and the family members who may become overwhelmed with fatigue. Give to those who suffer a knowledge of your love and may they know your salvation. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Jesus, our comforter, we pray for those who have suffered bereavement and remember before God those who have died. We remember that Jesus Christ is the light of the world, a light which no darkness can quench. Lord Jesus, you are light and in you we see light and hope for the future. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Jesus, our saviour and friend, who died for us and is beside us always, calmer of storms and healer of hurts, lead us into a loving relationship with you. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. We join our prayers together in the words that Jesus taught us, praying, Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. So we come to the end of our worship. Creator God, you give seed for us to sow and bread for us to eat. Make us thankful for what we have received and generous in supplying the needs of others, so all the world may give you thanks and glory through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Go in strong and growing faith. Trust in the tenderness of Christ to heal a bruised and broken world. Thanks be to God. Go in eager and refreshing hope. Work with Christ risen from the dead to fulfil the promise of a new creation. Thanks be to God. May the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be with you and go with you this day and always. Amen. Let us go in peace to tend and treasure the world God made and loves. In the name of Christ. Amen. Thank you for joining us for our online worship. Take care, stay safe and we'll see you again very soon. Bye bye.